In this problem we're looking for the voltage across the capacitor. This is a parallel RLC circuit. It's driven by a current source that has one of two values, either one amp prior to t equals zero, after t equals zero, it becomes five amps, and it does this in essentially a step-like fashion. So let's begin by finding the initial conditions. That's when the circuit is at t less than zero. So the source is one amp. Inductor goes to a short, capacitor goes to an open circuit. Now I'll call this VC of zero. And I also need to identify a direction for the inductor current. I'll do that. So, a uh, little bit of cir circuit simplification can be made here. Uh, we've got a parallel combination of a short circuit and a resistor, so that means the resistor can be pulled out since a short and parallel with anything is a short. So the voltage that we need is the voltage across this short circuit so that's zero. The current, well there's no place for this one amp current to go except through the inductor which looks like a short right now so that means IL of zero is one amp. So that's the initial conditions that we need. Let's go ahead and pull up the original circuit and start in on converting that to the S domain. So we say for T greater than zero, the source looks like this value, five amps. Since this current is just a constant, that looks like the value of the current source divided by S when we convert that to the S domain. Since the initial value for the capacitor voltage was zero, we don't need to worry about getting the initial condition involved, so we just turn that into one over CS. So that's one over C, which is one half, times S. So that's two over S. Now the inductor had an initial value, so we need to decide should it be the series voltage source form or should it be the parallel current source form. And since the thing we're looking for is the voltage across the capacitor, and right now this is working out kind of nice because we have three parallel impedances with a, uh, driven by a current source. So uh, if we don't introduce any more nodes into the circuit, we can keep the same form, and then if we use our parallel current source form, um, this current source can be combined with the current source over here. So I think that's going to be the easier way to go. The impedance of the inductor is L times S, so that's 2S, and the current source had an initial, well let me say, uh, the value of the current source is supposed to be our IL of zero divided by S. So we would have one over S. Parallel sources add together, and if we account for the fact that the uh, current source on this side has the opposite direction, then the combination will look like the 5 over S minus 1 over S. So, oh, wrong symbol. So the impedance looking in would be 5 in parallel with 2S in parallel with 2 over S and that would look like 1 over 1 fifth plus 1 over 2s plus 
plus s over 2. Knowing that, we could say that the voltage across the combined impedance would be the current source, which really that's the same thing as 4 over s at this point. Current source value times z of s. So if I take that value for the impedance and multiply it by 4s, that gives me the desired capacitor voltage in the s domain. So I'm going to clear this board and write down that intermediate result. I'm going to work on this a little bit just to put it into a little simpler form. So let's get a common denominator for this. We'd have 5 times 2s times 2. So that gives us the 2s times 2 for that term. Then we would have 5 times 2 for this. We would have 5 times 2s for that part, one up here. So this part comes around up on top. So s's cancel out. leaving us with 4 times 5, that's 20, 40, 80 over 4s plus 10 plus 10s. And I can see that I forgot this when I was collecting my terms, that was supposed to be an S squared, like that. So a standard form is to have a unit coefficient on the highest order power in the denominator. So let's divide top and bottom by 10. So 8 on top. I'll write these in order from highest order, uh, highest order S down to lowest order plus 0 0.4 times s plus 1. So now I'm ready to go ahead and find Vc of t as the inverse Laplace transform of Vc of s. So I'll take that expression and put that into maple. We'll do the inverse Laplace on that one. Let's take a look. This is standard stuff. Start start with the restart, say we need to do uh, inverse Laplace and Laplace kind of stuff. Here I've entered my equation for Vc of s. Here I'm saying that Vc of t is the inverse Laplace transform of Vc of s going from the s variable to the t variable. So let me capture that result into our uh, so-called handwritten type stuff. So 8.16 times e... I, I always like to write these out as e to the minus t over uh, time constant form. That just makes it easier to interpret. So if we do the reciprocal of 0.2, we get 5 seconds. And then the oscillation frequency is 0 0.980 radians per second times t, and this is in units of volts. So that's the functional form we're looking for. Just to visualize that a little bit easier, let's go ahead and plot that. I'll jump back to Maple. Uh, deal here is we have to have some sort of a range. So knowing that the time constant was 5, let's just try plotting this out from 0 to 5 seconds. So there we can see signs starting at the, the bottom here. That looks good. Let's go a little bit longer, say uh, 10 seconds. And just to see it hit the new steady state, let's push it out 
that out to 30 seconds, say. So we see that the step change in the current means that the capacitor voltage was starting out at zero. So uh, I'm not going to be able to draw it on here, but we've got zero up to this point. Then since it's a capacitor voltage, it can't change instantaneously. That means it starts from zero. We get this oscillation behavior. And eventually we get back to the same DC steady state where the capacitor voltage has to be zero.